Well, good day to you. It is August the 11th. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. I know it's been a few weeks since I put a video up and I'm really excited to start, but before I get going, I just want to point out to those people who are new that if you want to know more about Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom, the best thing to do is to do your own research. I've included links in the description portion of every one of these videos to hopefully make it easier for anyone who wants to know more about Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom about his priorities. So if you look at the links in the description of this video, you'll see two at the very top. The Share International link will give you the best, that site will give you the best um, background information. If you're a reader, if you like to like look at images and those kind of things. Now, if you're not so much into reading it and you just want to watch a video, right below it is a link to a YouTube channel that has a video, it's about an hour long, uh, of Benjamin Krem talking about Maitreya, talking about his priorities, talking about some other things in relation to this information. And if you listen to it for the whole hour, you'll get the best sense of this information coming from Benjamin Krem. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, in 2016, but it really is like he's back in the room with you. So. I found it, even though I knew this information pretty well, I, I found it to be very informative and I learned a few new things too. So if you're an old shoe at this, you might want to go back and watch that video too because it really did help me even. So hopefully it will help you too. Now you want to come back and join the discussion. Let me know what you think. Post a comment. You can uh, ask a question by posting your question in the comment section or you can email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. Or if you just want to listen to another video and not say anything, you can do that too. Now this is a good example of letting me know what you think by posting a comment. This is coming from Chris McCoy. What a convoluted mess. I have no idea what these videos are. Well, thank you very much for the comment, Chris. And if I don't know if you're listening to this video, hopefully it's not too much of a convoluted mess. But the reason why I'm bringing this one up is because this is in direct reference to what I just said about the links and getting background information about this information, about my tray and the Masters of Wisdom. Because when I do these videos. I don't give a lecture every time. And I could understand why you might not understand what this is about. So that's why I always recommend checking out the, the Share International site, getting some information that way. You know, you can even read some of the articles from Benjamin Krem's Master that I like to read. You can read it for yourself. You know, you can read letters to the editor from people who have had experiences with Maitreya. Get a better sense of the Masters that way. You can see images of the many miracle signs, and it will give you really good background information, and then you can see if this is true for you or not. If you don't want to go through all that and you just want to watch a video for about an hour, check out that YouTube video, and that will give you a really good sense of this information. And then if you have a question or two you want to ask me, come back and post a question, and I'll try to answer it in the next video or something. But anyway, I appreciate your comment nonetheless. Now, this is another comment of somebody letting me know what they think uh coming from exit the matrix what nonsense 40 years and a no-show stop dealing hopium all right well thank you now two things about this that i want to bring up the first one is people such as this person he's not alone um and i have people from time to time who will randomly comment and then i won't hear from them for a few months and then they comment again and i always ask this question to myself why do they keep doing that because if i didn't if I wasn't interested in any information coming from a YouTube channel, I would never go back, ever. I wouldn't waste my time at all, and I sure as heck wouldn't comment about how wrong they are for doing that. But I guess some people need a hobby. But I think it's deeper than that. I think that people who have a hard time and are very resistant to this information and feel the need to come back and comment again and tell me how much they don't like what I have to say and blah, 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 are just learning this information and accepting the truth of this information in their own way, in their own speed. I didn't agree with it the first time I read this information in one of Ben's books. It took me months of reading it and rereading it and reading it again to where I came to the understanding of this information and then I started to see some truth to it. It took a long time. You know, and if I hadn't found there to be some truth to it, even though I didn't really know it intellectually as true, I would never pick the book back up. I would have just put it in the back of my closet or in my bed and forgotten about it. 
And when people, you know, when you come back and you come back, there's something to this information. And I think more important, it's has to do with the fact that your ideology, your conditioning is creating some conflict with what you're hearing. Now, I know this information to be true based on my own personal experiences with Maitreya, but also based on the fact that I, I read a lot about it. And I'm also looking for the signs, you know, and those kind of things. And in terms of hopium, you know, I think hope is the most important thing that we should try to ascertain for ourselves in our life. To, to, if we, we're going to hold on to anything, we should hold on to hope. And if you watch a lot of news, you spend a lot of time on YouTube watching news from alternative sources or just talk to friends and family and coworkers, there's not a lot of hope out there. You know, the ironic thing is there's a tremendous amount of hope, but in terms of what you receive from other people, there's not a lot of hope, right? In fact, it's a lot of doom and gloom, really, which is no wonder that people are so depressed. Every time I talk to people, how are you doing? I'm tired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're just tired. We're, we're broken down. You know what I mean? And it's because we don't realize that there's hope out there because it just seems like it's either more of the same of the past or it's only going to get worse and there's no way it's ever going to get better. Well, there's nothing. That's the farthest thing from the truth. The truth is there's a tremendous amount of hope out there. If you search for signs, you will find them. Thus the name of this channel, Search for Signs. Maitreya said it himself. Those who search for signs will find them. All you have to do is look for it. You might not find, um, you know, through your search, you might not find a miracle like the crosses of light or a, a, a crop pattern made by a UFO. You might not see a UFO in the sky. But if you search for signs, you might see that there's love out there, that there's happiness out there, that there's people that, that see that there's hope out there. You know, I walk my dog in a park in my neighborhood and I don't see political divisions or racial divisions. I see people who are just walking, enjoying the day. They smile. I mean, not everybody's super friendly, but I've, I've by looking at life in a different way and searching for it in a different way, I'm seeing a lot of love out there between people. If you watch the news, there's not a lot of love. If I was just caught up in that and I didn't take the time to look at it in my own life, I would never see it. Or I would only see things that I hate or something like that, but I don't. I see, I see people who are actually reaching out to other people because they do love people. The hearts of humanity are sound, according to Maitreya. You know? But if you want to see miracles, if you want to see signs, search for them. You'll find them. However you find them, find them. You know, I have no doubt that you wouldn't. So hopefully that makes sense. And then the other thing I wanted to say about hope and how, why is it's important is because of something that Benjamin Krem said at the beginning of every lecture. He said he didn't expect people to believe what he had to say. He wasn't there to try to convince you to believe what he had to say. He was just hoping that you would listen to it with an open mind. But he always said this. He goes, if you leave the lecture hall with a bit more hope than you did when you came in to the lecture hall, he would be completely satisfied, even if you didn't believe what he had to say about Maitreya. Hope is very important. And it's not a false hope. The hope for mankind is for all of mankind. The hope for humanity is humanity. So, anyway, as Maitreya once said, keep your eyes on the prize, and the prize is humanity. Hopefully that helps. Now, Zach, what did you have to ask me? You said, who do I think Benjamin, Krem ma Benjamin Krem's master, who do you think Benjamin Krem's master is? Looks like 2025 will be the year. Rumblings of economic collapse like Benjamin Krem mentioned decades ago, starting in Japan. Now, everyone's talking about Japan. I heard a good clip of how the scenario will play out. I can send it to you. Yeah, sure. Email it to me. Don't, don't put the link in the, uh, in the reply to your comment. Okay, just email it to me and I'll watch it. It is said that even our extraterrestrial brothers are here to witness the great event. They're doing more than witnessing, by the way. They're actually very much involved and interactively helping humanity. So I wonder if they'll introduce themselves first, contact, or if my trail will come first. What do you think? All right, so as people like to say, I'll unpack this. So let's start with Benjamin Krem's master, okay? Who do I think Benjamin Krem's master is? Well, I can guess just like you can guess. I don't know for sure. I hung out with Benjamin Krem in private, I've seen him multiple times over the years while he was alive, and he never once slipped up and mentioned who his master was. 
The only thing he said was his master, his name was withheld for a time and eventually be known for who he is after Maitreya comes out. But he said that up until then, he would just be known as, um, he said his, he's well known in esoteric circles and he's a senior member of the hierarchy on this planet. Those are the only two things he was allowed to say. And if you read Alice Bailey in Initiation, Human and Solar, which was her first book, uh, the Master Joao Kool, who's image is at the very top left up here, uh, was only wanting to be known as a Tibetan disciple and not as a master or, or even his name as a, in the master Joao Kool. So, and it was because Alice Bailey slipped up at some point and when she was writing letters to, um, uh, I think it was in Discipleship of a New Age, she slipped up and mentioned who he was. And he had to kind of say, okay, I guess I guess we all have the cats out of the bag now. There's nothing you can do. You can't can't put the tooth toothpaste back in the tube once it's out, right? So it is what it is. So anyway, and that's how we know who he was. Ben never slipped up. So the times that I know him, he never said, you know. And I can guess just like you can guess. And if you read Alice Bailey, you know, the Master Moria, the Master Kudhumi. Uh, I pronounce it the Master Rakuzi. I heard it pronounced differently the other day, but um, the Master Rakuzi, the Master Joao Cool the Master Jesus. These are all senior members of the hierarchy on our planet and names are well known among esoteric circles. Was it, is it one of them? I don't know. Maybe. I'll just leave it like that. It's not important to know his name, first of all. So the most important thing is to, to if you read his articles like I do, to try to find the truths in what he's saying. You know, I encourage everyone to read the articles that I read out, you know, because it's not the best way to absorb what he's saying, just listening to me read it to you guys on YouTube. I'm only doing that to encourage whoever's interested to go to the Share International site and read the articles by Benjamin Krem's master for yourself or buy the book, A Master Speaks, which would probably be even better because you can just sit there and read it like in book form. But you can get the same effect by reading it online. And then you can really absorb what he has to say. And to, for me, it is the best way to understand how these masters think, how they'll be teaching humanity, the best way to understand the priorities of Maitreya, the, the true meaning of what it means for these masters to come back after for so long being away from humanity and totally forgotten about. What does it mean for humanity that they're coming back? And it also about the future of humanity, the potential of humanity. The importance of the principle of sharing. You can't get any from anywhere else more. The be, that, that's the best way of understanding what those those things are about. And if you read it and then go back and read it again and go back and read it again and try to apply some of the things to your life, inquire about the principle of sharing. Why is it important that humanity share? Is there any other way around it? Can we get away? Can we create peace without sharing? Well, when you read his articles, you can understand that there's no other way. That's the only way. What will happen to humanity when we do start the principle of sharing? You know, that kind of thing. And then you, you'll forget all about who is master. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, but I know you're a curious sort and so am I. And I've, you know, if I was hearing this information for the first time, I would ask the same question. So I'm not knocking you for the question, but... It really is an important, Zach. So anyway, hopefully that helps. All right, now let's go into the extraterrestrial things. You know, in terms of them witnessing the great event, they are here and have been here for eons. But their approach to humanity is becoming more and more and more. We're seeing more evidence of UFOs. Um, even as, as little as I like Donald Trump and as little respect as I had, had as our president here, he did let a little bit of the cat out of the bag about UFOs. Most people, it went right past most people. But he was, um, there was a tiny little article in the summer of 2020 with all the stuff going on with COVID and everything that just kind of overshadowed it. It was quite an extraordinary thing. He admitted to having meetings with high uh, levels of the Pentagon officials talking about UFOs. And not only... Um, almost said Benjamin Krem, not only Donald Trump, but also uh, senior members of, of Congress had, were briefed from, with, from uh, Pentagon officials about UFO sightings. 
Now he denied that there was what because he lies about everything. But anyway, he, but maybe he did honestly not think there was any truth to UFOs, because it really would mean the end of his power. That's the reason why they they withheld that information from the public for as long as they they had, according to to the masters. It wasn't that they thought there there would be a panic as most people think. That's the reason why the reason why governments were withholding the truth about the UFOs. And, the, and why they were here and that they mean us no harm is because we wouldn't look to our politicians for the answers. We'd start looking to them. So it would basically mean that they would be out of business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, maybe, but maybe Donald Trump really didn't believe that UFOs existed, but he was briefed on it. And I always say that if you read between the lines, there isn't anybody in government that would put their neck out on the line like that and talk about UFOs if they didn't have conclusive evidence that it was true. Never, ever, ever going to happen. So they l- admitted that there's UFOs by the, by the article, and it was totally missed by... I mean, I asked so many people if they had read that, and not one person that I knew in my life had noticed it. But it, you can search for it if you want. Search for signs, you can find it. It was articles, and it wasn't just in alternative news sources. It was on some mainstream sites like CNN and I think Fox News and some other ones. They had a little, just a little itty-bitty article. It wasn't even a video. It was just a, a print article about it that they were being briefed by um, Pentagon officials about UFOs. But Maitreya himself will be asked... To get to your question, uh, who's going to come first, the UFOs or the Space Brothers or, or Maitreya? The Maitreya, the masters, the senior members of the senior disciples who consciously are working with these masters um, and the Space Brothers who come here from other planets are working as a coordinated group. There isn't a rogue faction of masters that are going to come out before Maitreya is known for who he is. So the plan is, is that Maitreya would take a step into humanity's life by speaking to humanity, but in incognito, so that humanity would understand what he's saying, but also listen to him with honesty and be able to say yes or no. I like what he has to say. I agree with what he has to say or not. And not listen to him as someone with, of an authority or the world teacher or the one awaited by all the world's religions, which he is. But that's the reason why he's not using his name. None of these masters are going to come out and declare themselves as a master until Maitreya is out known for who he is. Not one. And these UFOs, according, and this is coming from the masters, so this is coming from, from Benjamin Kremp. Not, there, no space brother is going to come out and say that they are space brothers, one of the space brothers from another planet, until Maitreya comes out. And, but now, the sightings of the UFOs are different. Their approach is, is starting to, I think really ramp up over the past few decades to where back when I was a kid and you'd read about UFOs or see a video or something or a a little news program about UFOs, it was quite scary. It was quite taboo. Now it's coming almost commonplace. It's just that most humanity doesn't know the truth about who they are, but what they mean for humanity and why they're here. So because of the, the disservice that the governments have done over the past, you know, few decades, and even Hollywood and 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 uh, alternative news sources and and alternative media now on YouTube, the disservice that they're doing to humanity is they're they're talking about them being nefarious, about taking over humanity, or they're, they're fearful. They're sh- they're spreading their own fear about the unknown about the UFOs. But they're here on a spiritual mission, and they've been helping humanity out since the dawn of time. It's just that they're connection with humanity over the next few hundred or thousand years and on into the future will be much deeper and greater and more profound. They'll be teaching humanity in quite the same way that the masters will be teaching humanity. They'll give us their technology once once we're ready. Freely. They won't ask for any copyright, you know, <laughs> copyrights or patents or anything like that. They're going to give it to humanity freely. They're going to they're going to share with humanity their technology. But not until we are, we prove to uh, the masters in Maitreya that we're a peaceful people. They won't give us that technology. But yeah, they're. But Maitreya. It's been said that Maitreya will be asked by a reporter, and this is after the Day of Declaration about the the Space Brothers, and that will signal to Maitreya that humanity is ready 
to hear about it because the, the media, as corrupt as they are, they're our representatives. That's, they're how we communicate with one another. So when they ask a question, it means that humanity is ready. And then Maitreya can give the information that he needs to give to humanity about, about the Space Brothers. Does that make sense? You know, it really is one of several revelations that will be happening over the course of the next few years. The truth about the Space Brothers, the truth that we're not alone in the universe, will be a revelation for the majority of, of humanity. Some of us know it intellectually. Some of us might even believe it intellectually, but it hasn't really, the, the truth of it really hasn't set in as a reality, and it won't until we have physical evidence of it, you know, based on what Maitreya will give us. The other part, when we see the masters, we'll know conclusively that we're not at the top of the spiritual evolutionary ladder on this planet, that there's actually a kingdom above us called the masters of wisdom. That will be a revelation of huma for humanity. So not only are we not alone in the universe, but we're not even alone on our planet. You know? And then the truth about who and what God is and the truth about the laws of the universe is another great revelation. The law of cause and effect that was taught by all the, the spiritual teachers throughout history like Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and Krishna you know, we'll start to have more of a reality for us. We'll start to learn how to live within that law. We'll even know the other great law, the law of rebirth, because we'll see these masters. We'll know that, hey, that was the master who was the Apostle John. That was the master who was Jesus. That was the master who was the Apostle Paul or Peter or whoever. And then we'll start to realize that death isn't the end. That is just a continuation of life for us. And then the last revelation will be the scientifically prove it will be scientifically proven in a lab that we are souls and according to Ben's master it will be a group of scientists in France will prove it scientifically be able to give their experiments and their and their evidence to other scientists to prove in their labs and then it will be conclusive we'll know scientifically that we are souls so tremendous revelations for humanity you know over the next over the coming time. Now, in terms of the stock market crash that you were talking about, I wanted to approach this in a different way, if it's okay with you, Zach. I wanted to read from uh, a little bit from the book, Maitreya's Teachings, The Laws of Life. And this is a compilation of Maitreya's teachings and priorities that were given out by Maitreya, but not directly. It, they were given out indirectly through one of his associates. And I'm assuming they were given to the Share International Group, and they were, then they were published in the uh, Share International magazine in the 80s. But I don't know if he gave them to other members of the press or whatever like that, and they did whatever they did with it. But So he said, not only, this is in terms of the world stock market crash, he goes, not only large financial institutions which are tumbling into bankruptcy, the whole world is becoming bankrupt, mentally and spiritually. The world is going through a huge crisis, and all the medicines have been tried and failed. The tumor has to burst open before the healing can begin. The world is in such a chaotic state that it could happen at any time. The politicians and the generals can do nothing to stop it. Everything they have tried to avert disaster has failed. The Tokyo stock market has been turned by the politicians and businessmen into a giant monster serving only a culture of greed. Now it is crashing like everything else. Even the United Nations is being forced to serve the interest of the strong and the greedy. And he talks about Oxfam being the, one of the only charitable uh, organizations within the UN. Uh, and then he went on to talk about this, the, the market forces. And this is important to understand in terms of why it's needed to crash. Now, market forces will eventually um, be tamed. And he talks about this in terms of the taming of the market forces. He said, we shall see the taming of market forces, which have become the creed of so many politicians. They have deprived people of their health and wealth, but the people are awakening now in the name of humanity. The bounty of the nations will be shared among everyone. But the essence of market forces, Maitreya continues on and says, uh, the current creed adhered to internationally is that of market forces. Market forces mean one surrenders. The self is made to surrender to the unknown forces of life with a view to maximizing profit. Market forces generate possessiveness. Possessiveness can only be cherished with attachments. Attachments can only be maintained by passions in life. The essence of market forces is greed and separatism. 
the more one is attached to these forces, the more they create cells of imprisonment. This leads to spiritual bankruptcy and mental disequilibrium. The mental body or pattern is controlled by the brain on the physical plane. When the mental body experiences disequilibrium, the brain is affected and is not able to control the physical organs, referring to the so-called mad cow disease affecting British cattle at present. Now, this is something that happened a long time ago, but there are other things that, that market forces it creates in terms of diseases within the body of humanity. But anyway, um, he said, market forces in the West create wealth at the expense of millions of people dying from illnesses originating in chemicals and food. My trail will no longer allow unbridled market forces to prevail among the nations. The market for market will exist, but balanced by social democracy. Market plus social democracy maintains equilibrium. Anyway, there's more stuff that he talks about in terms of um, the stock market. And this is the last thing I want to say, the art of selfishness. Think about that. The impending stock market crash is the outcome of commercialization. Commercialization means making money while others starve. The moment you are taught the art of selfishness, you create, you cease to follow your destiny, which is to be aware of yourself. Those who cultivate rules and regulations that lead to nothing but selfishness eventually create a bad smell. This cannot be hidden forever. When corruption takes place, people become aware of the smell, hence the process of disintegration taking place in Japan now. The press is no longer, is it qu quiescent? Quiescent? I, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Anyway, Q-U-I-E-S-C-E-N-T. The people are no longer complacent. The type of culture that created this state of affairs will disappear. The end of commercialization is now at hand. All right. Hopefully that uh, answers that question. <laughs> but the, the stock market cr uh, crash in Japan has already happened. Now, will it start again in Japan? I don't know. You know, but... Hopefully that answers that question. Now, lastly, I want to um, address something coming from uh, Timothy Tilton, which was a uh, comment. I guess there's a question in there. He said, I cannot wait until the day of declaration. There, there will be a total collapse before, economic collapse before that day, right? Yes, that is true. Because it would be, it would be needed to start things anew. I deeply pray God's Hand hastens the process. I've been down spiritually awaiting that for that day. The joy of knowing all will be well, be, well I'm sorry, all will be re revived and restored keeps me going. I really, really can't wait for the Christ principle to flow through my mind, body, and spirit. Now, I wanted to, um, again, read something from uh, Maitreya's teachings of the laws of life in reference to what you were saying uh, there, Timothy. So I'm going to leave everybody with this. If you follow others instead of being yourself, you lose your sparkle. This is coming from Maitreya. You cannot reflect the light of individuality. Without that light, there is no progress in life. Similarly, when you experience the self within and come to know you are an immortal entity, completely separate from mind, spirit, and body, you learn to use these temples of the Lord creatively with awareness processes of healing follow automatically. This is why Maitreya has said that even people with AIDS will be healed through prayer and through the practice of honesty of mind, sincerity of spirit, and detachment. Without detachment, there is no salvation. The prayer given out previously by Maitreya can lead people to experience that self within, who is detached from mind, spirit, and body. It is included here for those who do not know it. I am the creator of the universe. I am the father and mother of the universe. Everything came from me. Everything shall return to me. Mind, spirit, and body are my temples for the self to realize in them my supreme being and becoming. I love you guys. Take care. Enjoy the day. And I look forward to putting up videos in the very near future. Have a wonderful day. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you in future videos.